Hi, this is Vojko Michnia. Welcome to Crossroads Psychology. In this mini video lecture, we will talk about psychology, sports and exercise. More specifically, I will answer the following question. What are the psychological benefits of sports and exercise? We will look at what does the literature say about this topic. So who am I to talk about this? Well, I'm a psychology teacher working at an international school in China. I am a positive psychology coach, a former competitive archer and an archery coach. Now, I like a challenge. I always like to challenge myself and I would like to share this short video with you to see that we all have the potential to reach our goals. Muscle up. That was another fail. We're training for this. Let's do it. So, as you can see, although I'm 44 years old, I can still do a muscle up and I can engage in intensive physical exercise. Age is not really the issue. If you have a goal, you can achieve your goals. At the end of this mini video lecture, I will have a challenge for you too. So what is the structure of this presentation? I will start by raising interest and awareness in the topic. Then we will look at what does the scientific literature actually say about psychology, sports and physical exercise. We look at three specific studies. Then, as I said, I'll have a challenge for you. A few final words as a wrap up. And in the end, I will share the references to these three studies. So let's begin by asking ourselves, think about your own physical fitness and well-being. What's your level? What's the level of your physical fitness and well-being? And by well-being, we refer to the state of being comfortable, healthy, or happy. So on a scale of one to 10, where one means barely able to go up the stairs and hating every minute of your existence, to 10, let's say you can do a muscle up and you enjoy your life to the fullest. Where do you think you are on this line? Are you a six? Are you a seven? Are you a nine? And I hope that by the end of this video, you will have the motivation to move up the line one more digit, one more unit. So let's begin with the first study. Where are we? Usually I do these presentations to high school students and I always like to begin with this kind of cheeky analogy. Let's read first this quotation by Michel Foucault, a French philosopher. He said, it is surprising that prisons resemble factories, schools, barracks, hospitals, which all resemble prisons. An interesting question. And if we think about it, let's look at this analogy. So we have here schools and prisons. Apparently, according to this meme, according to this chart, they follow an authoritarian structure. And if we think about it, we do have to listen to our teacher, to our principal and decisions are taken top down. We do have to follow a dress code. There is an emphasis on silence and order, obviously depending on the ethos of your school. In my classroom, I do encourage the students to speak up. There's a lot of negative reinforcement. And by negative reinforcement, we mean the removal of something negative to strengthen a desired behavior. So for example, a teacher would say, uh, Today, I won't give you homework if your test scores are high. So you remove something negative, as in like homework, if a desired behavior is displayed. We have to walk in lines. We kind of lose our individual autonomy when we enter the school. We can't do whatever we want. We obviously have a bridge freedoms because we are in a school and we are in a controlled environment. In most schools, students don't have an input in decision-making. Obviously, you can join the student council and you can 
join student governance and you can try to have your voice heard. But in most schools, the input is minimal. And there are set times in force for walking, eating, studying. You can't just go to the canteen and have lunch whenever you want. You have to wait for the bell. So you are not alone. If you think you're being restricted in schools, well, there's a comparison here with prisons. So let's look at this very, very interesting study by Woods and his colleagues. Positive collateral damage or purposeful design. How sports-based interventions impact the psychological well-being of people in prison, right? We made this analogy that a school is like a prison. Let's see what happens if a health-based program, activity-based, sports-based program is introduced in a prison and what are the psychological and well-being benefits of this program. And the aim of the study was to identify how sports-based interventions impact the psychological well-being within the prison population. The study focused on the perspective of all stakeholders involved in either the design, the delivery, or the oversight of these sport-based interventions in prisons. And we're talking about 16 stakeholders here from prisons within the United Kingdom. Now, an inductive thematic content analysis was adopted as the method of the study, and six themes seem to have emerged from the data. These themes are relating and relationships, sense of achievement, sporting occasions in their hands, facing forward, creating a life freedom. And for each theme or category, the researchers have identified subcategories which show the benefits of the program they spearheaded in these prisons. So with regards to relating and relationships, some of the benefits seen are improved social ability and mobility and respect and accountability for others. Let's not forget the environment here is that of a prison environment. The theme of sense of achievement showed that individuals found it beneficial to share their achievements and they found it beneficial that they received external recognition. With regards to sporting occasions, obviously there's novelty in playing a new sport and there's the aspect of escapism where you escape your day-to-day -day reality, that of being behind bars, through the means of a sport. The theme in their hands showed that the prisoners, the participants, were pleased to having a choice of activities and they were also pleased to be stakeholders, to have the stakeholder status of you know, designing and delivering or having oversight of the sports that were included in this program. In the theme facing forward, the researchers have identified that the sports actually reduced a transition. The researchers realized that sports reduced transitional anxiety because as you can imagine, from a free life to a life behind bars, there is a certain level of transitional anxiety, hopefully temporary. And openness to signposting. And signposting was measured with the use of certain guiding phrases such as, now I will show you how to play this game. And participants, let's not forget prisoners, were open to allowing others to instruct them how to play, let's say, a game or an activity they do not know how to play. And the last theme, creating a life rhythm, showed that the program gave the prisoners a structure to prison life, and they also gave transitional structure, you know, in the sense that from the cell, they got the mess hall, then the sports time, so they have something to look forward to. So we can conclude that sporting activities, a sports-based program, had quite a substantial impact on the psychological well-being of the prisoners, of the stakeholders who are in prisons. So imagine even more you as a free person engaging in a sporting activity within your school or your community. Imagine how much more it will impact your well-being. Now, let's move on to the second study, a section I want to call it Let's Be Social. We can see here 
a picture of my archers from Beijing Royal School Archery Club. Together versus alone. In this study, the researcher, AIM and colleagues looked at the psychological and social benefits of sport participation. The study is a systematic review of the psychological and social health benefits of participation in sports by children and adolescents. And this study found that team sports seem to be associated with improved health outcomes compared to individual activities due to the social nature of participation. So being involved in a team sport is more psychologically beneficial to you than just doing an individual sporting activity. And while archery is in itself an individual activity, doing it together with your teammates within your club can and will improve your health outcomes as shown by this study. And in the third study, we're gonna look at some of the possible negatives of being involved in sporting activities, because after all, it can't all be good, can it? And over here, you can see this is my hand after training for a long time at the bar, trying hard to do that muscle up. Do the benefits of participation in sports and exercise outweigh the negatives. This was an academic review that examined the biological, psychological and social benefits and harms of the three highest participation physical activities. These are walking or running, multidimensional sports and resistance exercises. So if we have a look at this diagram over here, we can see that each sport each activity might have benefits or negatives depending on the age group. Now the evidence indicates that the positives do outweigh the negatives and moderate amounts of exercise provide the most optimal balance while potential harms are typically associated with low or high participation. Overdoing it obviously is not good. So, we do have a winner. Here are the concluding remarks of this study. The evidence suggests that the benefits of participation in exercise and sport do outweigh the negatives from a biological, psychological and social perspective. And an international recommendation of 150 minutes of aerobic exercise and two resistance exercise sessions each week is generally applicable to balance positive and negative effects. And this can counter some of the potential harms associated with low or high participation. Now, I have a challenge for you. All right, people, you watched my presentation. I shared with you some research. So now it's your turn to put this into practice. See, I can still do this after one year. Three years ago, I couldn't do it. Now I can, I'm 42. I'm almost three times your age, so I challenge you. Start a plan, make a plan for your physical well-being. Challenge yourself. Thank you for watching this presentation. Thank you for your insights and input. You know, let's just continue being awesome. I hope you found this presentation interesting and beneficial. And if you want to find out more about these studies, I will leave all the details in the description below. Until next time, this is Vojko Michnia signing out from Beijing. Take care, let's go out and exercise.